highest God. This is the prophetess of the most highest God. I am speaking to the body and the bride of Christ. The Lord has given me a message last night about the things that are about to take place. This is what he told me. Mercy. I will have mercy on whom, whom I will have mercy and compassion on whom I will have compassion on, saith the Lord. Psalms 90. God's eternity and man's trans transitoriness. The reason God brings destruction on earth is to bring men to him so his work can be established upon the whole earth by his hands. The word of God that came to me was that. And this is the message. I will change the velocity of the speed of prophecy. The Lord is going to be accelerating the war of Israel and Hamas. He will bring also an acceleration of things in the United States of America and throughout the whole world. Wake up, church. I am coming. Ye must be ready, for I am going to accelerate all things, my beloved. He was telling that to me. Tell my people who are called by my name. They are going to see many things that have that they have read in my word. In the days ahead that will shock them. But these things must come to pass. My beloved handmaiden, write these things down in order. Number one. The war shall bring forth new insights. No, the war shall bring forth new insights to the war between my chosen people and their enemies. Number two, the nations that shall join the fight shall not remain. Number three, the USA shall stay and fight for my people Israel. Number four, this war shall be long and many shall perish. Number five, Israel shall receive the victory and win this war. Hamas will be no more. My people shall remain left alone for a time in the future. But my bride and body will come up here to be with me quickly, quickly, quickly. Time will be over for my bride and body. I am the Alpha and the Omega, and I have come in the flesh, and I am coming again. Love, Yeshua HaMashiach, your bridegroom. Time, 4 o'clock p.m. Judgment. Brothers and sisters, body of Christ, bride of Christ. Things are going to heat up like the Lord said. He is going to bring an acceleration upon the war and upon the things that we are seeing in the United States and throughout the whole world. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, for he is coming. Shalom, be blessed, and we are out of here. We'll see you in the air. Taking the children out of the hands of their mothers and fathers. Folks, if ever there was a time to pray, if ever there was a time to go to the throne of God, it is now. Amazing.
amazing. Uh, what is going to happen is going to stagger us. Once we've crossed certain boundaries and lines, there's no limit to what evil will do and become in the world. We're about to live and see a lawlessness that will shock us. You know, we'll be scratching our heads every morning and say, how is this possible? How did this thinking ever even get into this society in the first place? Now here's the good news. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So here's the way I read this. There will be a victorious church in the last days of time as we know it. There will be a people of God empowered by the Spirit of Almighty God, given the ability to stand that is supernatural, given courage that can only come from God, given power in their speech, given something of light in their eye, given something of character that can only come from the Holy Spirit, given a love that will cast out fear, given the courage to stand up and declare to this whole world that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. There is no other name given under heaven. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. So let that be your prayer now. It is mine. Oh God, give me your Holy Spirit. Oh God, as you did for the early church, when they prayed about the threatenings that were coming against the testimony of Christ. And as they prayed, you shook the place where they were. You gave them your Holy Spirit. You stretched out your hand and began to heal. And they were not afraid of the threatenings of the authorities of their time. They stood in the strength of their God because they lived on the side of truth. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There are times to stand up and be counted. There are times when we have to fight for our homes, fight for our families, fight for our children, fight for the unborn, fight for morality, fight for marriage, fight for truth. There are times we have to stand up and fight. And there will be a victorious church. Yes, there will be multitudes descending into darkness. There will be multitudes of formerly professing believers that will be following them into darkness. But thank God, there will be a victorious church. And I believe with all my heart, we will live to see a harvest in this last day, a glorious harvest for the glory of God. God will empower us to keep loving when love is growing cold. The love of many will grow cold. The love of many, even in God's house for the work of God will grow cold. But God will give us a supernatural enablement of love to even love our enemies, even love those who hate us and despitefully use us. God will give us that love. Only God can give it. But if you ask for it, it can be yours. Ask for it. You have not because you ask not. Jesus said it clearly through the apostle James. You have not simply because you ask not. He said to his own disciples, up to this point, you've not asked for anything. Ask now that your joy might be full. It's time to ask. It's time to say, God, fill my heart with a love that won't grow cold. Fill my heart with a love that's supernatural. Fill my heart with a love that will cause me even to love those that will hate me in the future. There'll be a victorious church empowered by the Holy Spirit to keep on giving when selfishness is abounding, when everyone is hoarding, when everyone is reaching out, when countries are fighting over resources, then everybody's doing this, trying to survive the best way they know how. There's going to be a people that still have open hearts and open hands looking around them to see if there's a need that they can meet and trusting that God will be their supply. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. There will be a victorious church empowered to live morally when the world is being baptized in filth. A victorious church making the choice to say, God, this house is your house. I'm not asking you to be a tenant. I'm asking you to take it over. I'm asking you to rearrange it. I'm asking you, God, secure the windows, secure the doors, my God. Secure the heart of this home. God Almighty, this is your dwelling place on the earth. Let it be a place of glory. 
There'll be a victorious church empowered by the Spirit to stay committed when abandonment is everywhere. To stay committed to the cause of Christ, committed to one another, committed to fighting for those who don't have a voice to fight for themselves, committed to fighting for even our enemies who are headed into an eternity that is so terrifying they have no idea where they're going. We are the only ones who do know and so we're committed to still even fight for them while there's hope. Committed to pointing the way when everyone is pointing the finger. Hallelujah. Committed to pointing the way to eternal life. Committed to standing in the marketplace as they did in the early church. There'll be a church empowered by the Holy Spirit to have lamps filled with light to help those who are trying to escape the darkness. People with a confidence in God, a clear vision, an eye to the simplicity of truth, knowing the real gospel, who are not afraid to say he is the way, the truth, and the life. And lastly, a church empowered by the Holy Spirit to have hearts filled with praise, even when the joy of the land is gone. Filled with praise, a song of glory. You see, because our focus is not on the temple here. Our focus is not on the stones. Our focus is not on anything of this world, for we know from the testimony of Scripture that it is going to be dissolved. The Apostle Peter said, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what kinds of persons ought we to be? Second Peter, knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers, the apostles, the disciples, fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And the Lord says for us to always keep scripture inside of our hearts so we may know what is truth and what is error. Peter speaks of truth, telling us what kind of people we should be at the end of time. We should be godly, loving, and serving people, righteous and holy people. Brothers and sisters, body of Christ, bride of Christ, I love listening to this preacher. And what he preached is what the Lord is speaking about today. So I hope you enjoyed the video and was spoken by the Holy Spirit. Be blessed. Shabbat Shalom. We'll see you in heaven. Mwah.